we're first going to start with tracing out the shoe and getting the proper shoe dimensions, I guess. Now with most patterns, you're going to have an object that is symmetrical. So it's going to be same on both sides. And in this case, each foot is going to be the same pattern. So what you do, you make one pattern, you flip it upside, flip it to the opposite side, and there's a pattern for the other side. So you only have to do the work once, which is really awesome. And you can cut everything at the same time. So using a writing implement that you can actually see on your paper, you're going to start to trace around the sole part of your shoe. What this is going to do is give you the pattern for your sole. Doesn't have to be super perfect, but what you can see is that I have here a pretty good copy of the sole of these wedges. Now always be sure to label your pattern pieces because you don't want to be flipping stuff back and forth and having a hard time figuring out what goes where. So in this case, this is the left side. So now I'm going to start with the outside of my shoe. Now what you're going to notice is that the shoe isn't going to lay flat. So you're going to have to carefully rock your shoe when you're tracing to make sure that you get the proper size pattern. So we're going to start from the back. Now this is not an exact science. I have a shoe-like shape here. Um, it's not going to be the end of the world if it's not super per if your pattern isn't super perfect. Your fabric is going to forgive a lot of crimes when it's time to actually cut out and pin and sew. The biggest benefit is that you're going to have past your your actual pattern, you're going to have a seam allowance. I like to use anywhere from a half to like three quarters of an inch of a seam allowance. And that gives you a lot of room to play with. So if you've made a mistake, you can usually make up for it in your seam allowance. Alrighty, so it's a little awkward given the lack of space in my craft room, but down here I have my shoe that I outlined. I did it in blue so it's easier to see. And here is a piece of a bodysuit pattern that I did quite a while back. I'm going to add this on. Now this is where it can get a little tricky. I will show you a slightly different way to go about this, especially if you don't have a leg pattern. So what you're going to end up doing is you're going to have to fudge some of it. Let's see. So sort of what you end up with, again, I started with my shoe that I traced. I take my my leg pattern and I line it up, kind of just eyeballing it. You want to give yourself gradual edges and angles so it's easier to get your foot in and out. If you went with the angle that the patterns are giving you, that is just not physically possible for a human adult foot to maneuver. 
and be in comfortably regardless of how stretchy your spandex is so you're gonna wanna especially with the curves you could be a little more generous with the curves it's always easier to go back and bring those in if you have to than having to cut again and make that more comfortable for you so you just trace around the pattern up to I did a little past the knee just in case I need more space and that gives me my boot cover so if you do not have a pattern for your leg there is another little more awkward way of going about this when you sit down on your paper you can then trace around your leg and down the other side as I said it's gonna be a little awkward but less awkward than pinning the boot cover onto you that's the second way of doing it if you do not have a um, a pattern pre-made of your leg and this is a good time to double check this inside angle again I'm pretty proud of myself did pretty good guessing how much space I'm gonna need there so that's the first part of this give me a second to readjust and we'll continue on alrighty so that is two parts of your root cover and that's all you need your I traced the outside of this shoe the inside will come in giving your insole however you don't need to trace a whole other part because you you've already done your sole and when you sew your sole on this will bring that fabric in more than tracing out a whole new pattern is going to do. Uh, that's it for now. I'm going to stop it here actually. And this is just going to be the pattern making section of boot covers. I am going to come back and do a separate video on actually sewing your boot covers together and testing for fit all those things but for now that's gonna be it for this portion of boot cover making